Hey, my name is Felipe and welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to show you how to read a QR code from Python and I'm also going to show you how to build a QR attendance system using Python and OpenCV. So let's get started. And let's start by looking at the project requirements. These are the requirements we are going to use in this project. These are the libraries we are going to use. You can see this is uh, OpenCV. We are going to use OpenCV, Matplotlib, NumPy and this library which is PICW. This is the library we are going to use in order to read all QR codes and to extract all the information from them. So uh, these are the requirements we are going to use in this project and in order to install these requirements the only thing we need to do is to go to our terminal and click pip install minus r requirements. Uh, and this is going to be all. I have already installed these requirements, so nothing is going to happen on my case. But uh, please be aware that you have to install these requirements before install before starting this project. Now let's continue. And in order to start coding everything that we are going to do today, let's do this in two steps because we are going to build a QR attendance system. So we are going to read the QR code of our users and we are going to check if these users are allowed to get into our uh, building or into our system or whatever. We are going to read all the QR codes in our webcam and we are going to compare this web co these QR codes against our database or something like that. But before doing that, let's just, uh, in order to get more familiar with uh, QR codes and how to read them and the information that's coded within, I am going to show you how to, I have prepared some images and I, ha I am, and I am going to show you how to read the QR codes in these images using the library I just show you. So I am going to build a very basic script, which is going to be something like this. I'm going to import OS. Then I'm going to define my input directory, which is going to be this directory. And the only thing I'm going to do for now is just reading all the images in this directory. And I'm going to read the QR codes in these images because we want to build a QR attendance system, but let's go one step at a time. I think it's going to be super viable if we can uh, get more familiar with this process before building the QR attendance system. So this is my input directory. I'm going to go through all the images in this directory for J in host list here and my input dir and ah, input dir and I'm going to say this is sorted and what I'm going to do is to port cv2 and I'm going to read this image so path dot join input dir j okay this is going to be our image and what I'm going to do now is to import a very specific function from this library which is going to be from this from from piece bar dot piece bar import the code okay this is the very specific function we are going to use in order to decode our QR codes in order to read all the information in our QR codes so I have already uh, read the image. I have loaded the image to memory. So what I'm going to do next is to call the code and I'm going to give it my image. And I am going to call this new object QR info. So I have just uh, read the image and I have input the image into the code. And then I have created a new object, which is QR info. Now let's take a look at QR info. Let's see how it looks like. I'm going to execute main. And you can see that we have four uh, objects. We have four uh, lists, or at least it looks like a list because it starts with this symbol. And if I go to the end, I see that I have this symbol at the end. So this looks like a list. Each one of these elements look like a list. And you can see that for each one of these uh, objects, we have different fields. We have a field which is data, another one which is type, rect, polygon, and then we have our fields over here, 
quality and orientation. So this is how this object look like. This is our, all the different fields. This is all the information we have in each one of these QR info objects. And I told you that this looks like a list because it starts with this character and it also ends with this or character. But now let's make sure if this is a list or not. So I am going to print the type of QR info and I get that this is a list uh, in fact. So what I am going to do is to print or file name. So I'm going to print J and I am going to, going to print the length of each one of these lists. And let's see what happens. I get one PNG is length one, two PNG is length one as well, three PNG is one, and then four PNG is three. And if I look at the images, I get that for these three images, I have only one QR code and for four PNG, I have three QR codes. So the length of this list is giving me the uh, number of how many QR codes I have in that image. And that's super important. That's uh, a lot of information we are getting so far. So this is super important. You should, you should uh, know this. And what we're going to do next is to, I'm just going to uh, go one step by time. So I'm going to work on the first element only. And for this first element, what I'm going to do is for uh, QR in QR info. Now we are only going to work with one QR code. Uh, let's print the QR and then let's extract all the data. But for now, let's see the, this QR. Okay, so we, we see that we have one of these objects, which is called decoded, and we have different fields, data, type, rect, polygon, and we also notice that we have other fields over here, quality and orientation. Let's consider only these three objects, data, rect, and polygon. These are the most important ones, and let's just don't mind the rest. So we are going to work on these three fields, and I am going to parse these fields by calling data equal qr dot data rect equal qr dot rect and then polygon equal qr dot polygon and then i am just going to print data print rect and print polygon okay and now I am printing each one of these fields. You can see the data is actually like a very random uh, message. Each one of these QR codes, I just encoded some random messages. It doesn't really mean anything. Then for rect and for the polygon, we notice that we have a few numbers. It says uh, left top width and height, and this says uh, something like a, a few points, and each one of these points we have the X and the Y coordinate. So we have some, some information that's related to something that has to do with location, right? Because we have linked a uh, left top width, height, points. This is, has to do with location. And in fact, this is the location of our QR code within our image, within our input image. And you notice that we have two of these objects. We have rect and we have polygon. And in order to show you the difference, the, the, maybe the best way for me to show you what's the difference between them, is just plotting each one of these objects so you can see what's the difference between them. Both of them are bounding boxes, so both of them give us the location of this QR code within the image, but they, they it's a little different the way they do it. So I am going to call, I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and what I'm going to do now is just plotting these uh, QR codes. So I am going to call plot in show, and I am going to call uh, my image, the input image, yeah, and then plot.show. So, so far I'm just plotting the original image with nothing written on top and something I have to do is to call convert color, convert color image, then cv2 dot color and this is bgr to rgb. Okay, so let's see if everything works properly. Everything works properly. We are plotting our original image, but let's plot the 
QR code on top. So I am going to call two functions, two OpenCV functions. The first one of them is going to be rectangle. And the way we are going to use rectangle is with our image. Then we need to specify two uh, coordinates. And then we need to specify a color, which I am going to use green. And then a width, which I am going to set in five. A width, sorry, a uh, thickness. Then for this value, it's going to be rect.left rect.top because this is the upper left corner, then rect.left plus rect.width and then rect.top plus rect.height and that's pretty much it. And then I'm going to call another function which is cv2.polylines and the way this works is by specifying the same object or image then this is how I'm going to specify the uh, the bounding box I'm going to call a list of np.array and I am going to input my polygon this is how we are going to do it it's slightly different as the case above for a rectangle the if for for a polyline this is how we have to do it and uh, yeah, that's pretty much how it works. So I'm going to import NumP as MP, otherwise this is not going to work. And now I need to specify our values. One of them is if this is a closed polyline or not. I'm going to say it is, so this is true. And then if I'm not mistaken, all I have to do is to specify the color, which I am going to set in blue and then also the thickness which is 5. I think I haven't forgotten anything, I think this is how it works. So let's plot it and I'm going to zoom our QR code and you can see that this is what I mean that we have two different bonding boxes and both of them specify our QR location but in a different way. The green QR code, it's the, sorry, the, the green bound, bounding box is the uh, bounding box which is the let's say the classical bounding box the one we usually use for object detection for example which is a rect bounding box right it doesn't really matter where the object is uh, located its orientation or anything we are plotting a rect bounding box and then the blue one which is the polyline is actually the it's a bonding box which is enclosing our object, which is super fit to our object, right? Um, in this case, we have a bonding box which is like exactly exact the exact location of our object. So that's basically the difference between these two type of um, bonding boxes. One of them is rect, no matter the location of our object, and the other one is completely fit to the exact location of our object. You can see the blue bonding box like the bonding box which is enclosing of the object of minimum area, right? Because we could define many, many, many bonding boxes and all of them contain the object, but this is the one that contains the object with a minimum area. So that's another way to, to understand the difference between the blue one and the green one. And that's going to be all for now. So this is how we plot the uh, the bounding boxes. This is all the information we have in a QR code. And this is how we can locate exactly where the QR code is located in our input image. So let me do exactly the same for all the images in my example data directory. And we can see this one, which we have already uh, noticed. Then this is the other one. Also, please mind, it doesn't really matter the color of our QR code. We are going to detect it anyway. Then in this case, it's exactly the same. We are detecting the QR code. And in this case, we are actually seeing only one because we are plotting right after the, the drawing. But if I close this one and if I close this one, here we have all the plottings. And you can see it's exactly the same situation. We have the green bonding box, which is like the red one, and then the blue one is enclosing like exactly where the QR code is located. So this is going to be all for this 
step now we 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 learned how to read a qr code how to get all the information from it so the next step will be to create a new file which is going to be main uh, webcam and this is going to be our main script the one we are going to use in order to access our webcam and to read the qr codes which are being displayed on this webcam so we can uh, grant access to our users or we can deny access to our users so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to import exactly the same libraries because uh, we are going to use exactly the same libraries then i am going to define an object which is going to be cap and this is cv2 video video capture and we need to specify a number which is going to be the number of our um, camera so then we are going to say while true because we are going to do this continuously we are going to have this uh, process capturing data from the camera continuously while true we are going to get a frame from the camera and we do this by cap.read then we need to show this frame so we do something like this and we need also to specify the title for this window we, let's call it webcam and then we need to close this window and in order to do that i am going to access my cheat sheet which is this one where i have copied a few things i am not going to remember <laughs> so i am going to copy these two sentences and with these two lines basically what we are doing is every time i execute the letter q the character q i am going to leave this system and then i am going to call cap release and then cb2 destroy all windows not completely sure if this is lowercase or uppercase let's try this way and let's see what happens and now i am going to no i'm still executing the previous one so i'm going to execute this one and i have to grant access to my camera and everything seems to be working fine i press q and everything is okay so the first thing i am going to do is to change this by the number two because i want to use another webcam so this is going to be better yeah then what i am going to do is uh, i want to detect all the qr codes within that frame within the webcam remember the user is going to be displaying the qr code let me show you exactly what the user is going to be doing and we need to detect all the qr codes within this image the user is going to be holding a qr code which is going to look like this right so we need to detect it and we need to do some things with it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to call exactly the same uh, function i'm going to decode this is why it was super helpful to get more familiar with these functions before starting the actual tutorial so i am going to call the qr info and then if there is a qr code if the length of this list is greater than zero if we have at least one and we are going to assume we have only one but let's say if we have uh, at least one we are going to call our qr code is going to be the only one we're going to have which is a reasonable assumption because we are only going to have one user at a time holding a qr code uh, and then i am going to access the information the same way i did here okay so i'm accessing data rect and polygon which are the bounding boxes of our qr code uh, and then what i am going to do is i am going to plot this image into the frame so why not i am going to use the same functions i used before i am going to use these two functions which i'm just going to copy paste and now instead of image i have called the image frame so i am going to input frame and everything else seems to be okay so let's see if this works properly okay something it is not working properly so let's see if i made any mistake um, 
let's see what happens i am calling him show here and actually i need to show it at the end otherwise i'm not showing anything <laughs> okay so let's do it again and now everything seems to be working properly okay so what we are going to do now is to uh, do something with the data with the message that's uh, encoded within the qr code for now the only thing we're going to do is to call cb2.putText so we are going to write the message in our frame so i am going to call put text frame then the text we are going to write in our frame which for now let's say this is going to be data uh, then we need to specify the location where where exactly we want to write our text and for now let's just assume we want to write it in the upper left corner we are going to make a, a slight adjustment into these values in a few minutes but for now let's just assume this is going to be uh, this is the location then the font i am going to copy and paste this number the size i'm going to put it as a one and then the color i'm going to say this is going to be green and the width uh, sorry the thickness is going to be a two for now let's say these are the values this is not going to work because we need to do something with data before uh, using data as if it were a string but for now let's just execute this function and let's make sure it fails it failed <laughs> and the reason it fails is because it tries to convert something which is not a string into a string so the way this is going to work in order to show you why this doesn't work i am going to print data and i'm also going to print the type of data so we can take a look at exactly what is data because it looked like a string but it seems it is not a string i'm going to do it again i get the same error and i see that now the class is not a string but it's bytes if we want to get the value of this string as if it were a string we need to call the code so in order to make it simple and, and to make it fast uh, we need to call the the code attribute of the data object i'm going to execute it again and now you will see we don't have any error right now we are writing the text on top of our qr code um, and i am going to make a slight adjustment because i think it's too I, I don't really like the visualization so i'm going to say this is minus 15 and i'm going to adjust the thickness as well let's see now um, now it's better yeah now i like it and the text we are plotting this sequence of zeros this is the uh, data that's encoded with the within the qr code so assuming this is the qr code that i am going to use in order to get access to this system uh, this is the code for my user right each user will have like a collection of numbers characters and so on so this is the user the, this is the code that was assigned to me to my user so for now let's just exit this window and let's continue but we, we mentioned that this was going to be a QR attendance system. So in order to make it an attendance system, an, a, a very specific type of attendance system where the users are going to be able to uh, access the system or not. So what we need to do is to define a whitelist of all of our authorized users. So I'm going to call this whitelist uh, something like, I'm going to call it whitelist whitelist.txt and in this whitelist i am going to add the code of all of our authorized users for now i am just going to put my code which is nine zeros so zero uh, one two three four five six seven eight and nine let's see if everything is okay one two three four five six seven eight and nine yeah so this is going to be the only authorized uh, user for now and now let's define a new variable which is uh, authorized users this is going to be a list and with open whitelist.txt as read as f 
uh, I'm going to say authorize users equals to uh, this is going to be l minus the last element because it's the new line character for l in f dot read lines if len l greater than two in order to uh, exclude this new line character or any exchange situation okay and i don't really need to define it before so this is going to be enough yeah and now what i need to do is let's do all of this only if the if uh, data.decode is within my authorized users so if data.decode is a, one of my authorized users then then i am going to plot i'm going to write a very specific message which is access granted right because this means that this user is authorized to get into the system so this is what i am going to write in case this is one of my authorized users and if it's not else then i am going to write access denied and i'm going to make access denied in red and the other one is green so everything is okay it's it's a good color for access granted so it's okay now let's do it again let's go back to my qr and i get access denied so it seems i didn't really input the code well let's go back here maybe i have a zero missing let's take a look access denied something i'm not doing something right uh, so if data.decode well, is is in authorized users i don't really need the is sorry i had a error let's do it again now it's okay yeah uh, so uh, this means that it's reading the, the code within my QR code, it's reading my, my personal code. My code is in the list of authorized users, so everything is okay, I get access granted. And let's see what happens if uh, my code is not in the whitelist. If my code is not in the whitelist, I am going to get an access denied. So uh, this is pretty much how we can implement the QR attendance system but something is missing because when we grant access to an user we also want to log this information into the system we want to know exactly which are the users that have entered the system and exactly when so if this situation we are going to write we're going to define a new variable which is going to be oh i need to close this object i forgot to do it and i'm going to define a new variable which is log path and log path is going to be log.txt so this is where we are going to write a log of all the users that has uh, that have been logged into the system so if the situation if access granted then uh, with open log path this is going to be right this is going to be append because we are going to be writing into this object continuously because we are going to have a system and people are going to be logging in all the time so uh, we don't really want to overwrite the file name every every single time we don't want to overwrite the file every single time but we want to just append a new entry at the end so as append as f and this is going to be f dot write We want to log two things. We want to log the user that has been uh, that has accessed the system, and this is going to be data the code. This is the username. This is the user code, and then I also want to uh, write the date time. Port date time. Uh, import date. I want to 
write the specific time this happened. So I want to write date time dot date time dot now. So this is going to give us exactly this the, the time, the exact time this user has accessed the system. So let's see if this works. I'm going to close it. And let's see if this works. So I'm going to try to log in again. Access denied because I forgot to change the, the this code again. So I have nine zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And I'm going to do it again. Okay, access granted. I'm going to exit. And now if I take a look at the log, I see I have many entries. I have many, many entries with my username, with my user code, and then the exact time I am logging into the system. But something is not right. You can see something is obviously not right. As I am holding the phone with the QR code, this system is taking frames continuously and it's like logging me into the system continuously. So we don't really need so many entries. We uh, only need one entry because it, it, it's, it's, it's not necessary to have this many entries. So let's do a, a slight addition in order to do some logic that if the user has already logged into the system, if we have already granted access to this user, then we are not going to log a new entry in the log. So let's see how we can do that. I am going to define a new variable, which is going to be most, uh, most recent access. This is going to be a dictionary, and the way we are going to use this is like this. If this is in authorized users, then I'm going to put the, the text access granted, but then if um, data.decode not in most recent access.keys let me just do it, and in a couple of seconds, I'm, I'm going to explain why I'm doing each one of these conditions. Or um, let me write it, which is going to be most recent access keys data decode. Yes, minus time dot time greater than. Um, time between locks and then I'm going to call this and I'm going to put this here okay I need to import time and I am going to define this variable time between locks uh, threshold it's going to be five seconds for now, but I'm going to edit it later. This is going to be thresholds, time between logs, threshold. And basically what I'm doing here is I, I am asking if this key is not in the, if this username, if this user code is not in our keys, in the keys of this object. And if it is not, or if it is not, it's because this user has never logged so far into this system. But if it is one of our keys, then I am going to ask the what's the value. And this is going to be like a value which is going to give us what's the exact time this user has last accessed the system. Um, and I'm going to see if we have at least this amount of time between these two accesses. Right, so let me show you exactly how this works after doing this or before doing this. I'm going to update this value by time dot time. Let's just show you how this works and then I'm going to explain a little more. I am going to show you the QR code. I guess access granted and now if I go to my log maybe the best way to do is just deleting all these entries and do it again I'm going to wait a few seconds so 
it's going to be a little more clear what I want to show you. I think that's going to be enough. Quit. And we see we have only one entry, so no, it wasn't enough. Let's do it again. Let's see if everything's okay. Yes, five, it's okay. Um, okay, access granted. So I'm just going to hold my phone here and I'm not going to leave this. Uh, I'm not going to exit the program. Let's see if this works. I think we should have have at least five seconds. So something is not right. I think something is not right. Let me review if everything is it's properly set. Okay, so I have found the issue and basically what's going on is that when we are saving this value time dot time, we are saving the current time. But then when we go through this if again, when we go through this if the next time and all the other times, we are subtracting this value, the value we saved a couple of seconds ago, to the current time in the moment we are going through the if. So basically, the, to give you a summary, this number is going to be negative always. This is going to be uh, lesser than zero. This is going to be negative. So when we compare this number to this other number, we are going to have always uh, false because it, this is never going to be greater than this. So anyway, what we need to do is to reverse the order and we need to do time dot time minus this other element and that should be it in order to have our log up and running. So let's do it. I get an access granted and now I go to the logs. I have an entry. If I go again, I have another entry which is five seconds apart. And then if I check again, I have another entry which is always five seconds apart, and then I'm going to do it again, another entry five seconds apart. So everything seems to be working properly, and that was basically our problem. That was basically what was going on. So this is it. <laughs> this is all we have to do in order to build our QR attendance system, and this is going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed this video, I invite you to click the like button and I also invite you to subscribe to my channel. My name is Felipe, I'm a computer vision developer and in this channel I make tutorials exactly like this one where I show you different applications of computer vision, image processing and machine learning. So this is going to be all for today and see you on the next video.